and then start recording again. All right, guys. So again, we have our mission. We have our objective. Turn. The name of the game is turn. These three pages right here that we have on the on the on our right side from the catalog into this synthesized, compiled one sheet that explains the whole combo inscribe and intersect in this case okay so here we go guys you guys help me with this okay i know that you guys are probably working on your assignment but you know uh let's try to uh, you know uh focus our attention on this real quick so start out with a new file um let's do the letter size right eight and a half by 11 inches let's do portrait and um, I was originally thinking of doing the six, but you know what? Let's actually just do, how about, what if we just do three, right? So you should have six right now that you're submitting today. But let's actually do uh, diagrams just for three. So let's create three artboards, okay? So width, height, units, orientation, artboards, go, right? So we create that right here. Now, I want you guys to have... Uh, some sort of fun with the graphical um, depiction of this. Now, notice that here I was playing with different backgrounds. Feel free to do the same, right? So it's nice to have the, the well, the white one is you know, not that exciting. Probably you're going to do it a lot in your career. Uh, here I switched it up for black. But you'll see how later on, you know, you can even play with different colors and uh, you, you start getting a different kind of, uh, of a board. Right. So I want you guys to, uh, to you know, uh, have creative freedom in terms of the uh, the design of the of the board. Um, let's just set some uh, some uh, um, some bottom line uh, criteria for for everyone to follow. Okay. So I like to create my backgrounds with a layer. So I'm actually going to use that layer right there to turn this into a uh, background. And with this background, I'm going to draw a rectangle. I am going to give it a fill, right? So I come over here and I remove its background. And I set this background right here, right? But this background can be any color, really, guys, right? And so I can just maybe for right now, just try something different. I'll do, maybe I don't want a black, black. I'll do like a gray, a gray right there, right? And, you know, let's copy this right here. Okay. And I like to have my background on its own layer so that I can actually lock it. And right? so I come over here and lock it. Lock my background layer. Okay. So I'm going to create a new layer. All right. This new layer I'm going to use for the titles. And let's go ahead and use the same titles that I have, guys. Okay. So we're going to have the title, which is the... Um, the main title or the sheet title, which is going to be the combo name, right? So you scrap an intersect, and I'm actually missing this space right there. So we have the title. We're going to insert the subtitle. We're going to create the operation inscribe. We're going to do the operation, operation, and then we're going to have procedure, procedure, and procedure. I'm going to sheet right now, and I'm going to copy it, but I am going to give you guys the names. I'm going to use edit pasting in place and on this board right here, edit in place, all right? So notice that I'm not showing you guys how to do text. Uh, we definitely cover how to do text by now, right? I am telling you guys where to place this text, okay? And I'm even going to give you the, the font sizes right now. So title, sheet title, um, we have a... Uh, a font size of 24, right? Um, subtitles, we have a size of uh, 14. And again, guys, what I'm giving you is a guideline. Feel free to experiment and to have creative freedom because, again, this 14, it's not that big of a font size. It looks big, big because of the font type, I think, right? Um, and notice that I have different font selections. I have here the Berlin Sans for that main title, and then here I have the subtitle right there, right? So set up your title and subtitle. Set up your um, operation and combo titles, 
which is the operation and the operation name operation and operation and we have the uh, combined operations uh, which is the last one inscribe and interesting right those are all matching those are all the same size those are all the same field now notice that these in my case i have a 14 the first word is bolded the second one is not underneath that i have the title procedure that procedure is on a 10 very small and it's regular right so i have that right there right flipped flipped there you go. that should give the uh, that should give you guys your um base um, um sheet um again i'm getting the uh the titles from the document right so i'll I'll share with you guys um, this this one right here as an as an example. Notice that I have the first operation name, the second operation name, and then the the combo together, right? Um, so that's what I have right here. And then we have the procedure, and then we also have these little numbers right here. So I'm going to copy this ones right here. I'm going to do it paste in place. Uh, I'll say that I have those right there. So I have one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, the sequence might change. The steps might change. But um, that's kind of a case by case. Now, notice as well that we have um, the line right here. So that's easy, right? I can come over here and do a line. Give it a width or thickness and notice that I'm you know, I'm following uh, a little bit what the uh, as a as a graphical cue like hey that's cool that's interesting so I'll do that right so I have that little square at the end All right so the way that I can do that is by going to a stroke All right um and creating uh uh, giving it the ah, um, it's not gonna let me do that. But uh, if you click on stroke and uh, over here, right on the arrowheads, you can select uh, the square. Um, you know, you can select multiple things. I I guess if you wanna have fun. Um, I just like to keep it simple, so I'll do the square. And speaking of keeping it simple, I think it might be too big. So I'm actually going to reduce it a little bit, give it a 70% uh, size. And um, it's not a big deal, but um, there's this tool right here where it says the align. Notice the difference between those two, right? Right here. As I change those settings right here. And so stroke, that, 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 that right there. So I like to have it this way, right there. Okay. So I have set up um, our sheet. I can copy this. Notice that I have this line over here. I can use my A tool and I extend this right here. And um, following some graphic conventions, I have gone ahead and uh, removed the endpoint out of this line right here. Right, so I remove the arrowhead and I leave it plain like that with the none. Right, so we have that right there. Okay, we'll go ahead and file, save as. Right, um, form, prepare to design, so prepare to design, form, diagrams. We save that right there. Okay. So far, so good. Any any questions? No. 
Okay. All right. So now what do we need to do? Well, now we need to uh, actually create the content, right, for for this um, um, port. Right? So we're actually starting with, uh, in this case, for example, we're starting with inscribe, right? And we're going through its operation, okay? So the way that I recommend doing that is to actually open up the book into the, uh, the operation that you're trying to depict, in this case, inscribe. Uh, study the kind of drawings that you're going to need so that you can then draw them. Okay. What do I mean exactly? Well, that um, I come to um, your, uh, we come to your uh, Rhino space. Right, where you have your operations that you guys are submitting today. Um, I can copy those. And notice, right, I have uh, copied the, the base volume. Uh, here, I'll start it from scratch, right? So I can copy the base volume right here. From there, I can copy that. Notice that I am using color as a, as a cue for this. So um, I have my, I'm gonna set my, my first uh, step right here, right? So I'm gonna get, um, right? Um, like that, right? So I have um, base volumes on the left, and then here I start um, labeling this, right? So this guy turns into a um, construction layer, right? Start moving this. Do that. And then copy it. Right? And do the Boolean difference. All right, so I subtract from that one with that one. All right, and that should be the end result. All right, and I change this one to its um, right layer. So notice I have gone ahead and uh, trans translated this 2D procedure into a 3D procedure, and I have gone ahead and enhanced it, right? So step one is base volumes so i have it right there step two is the insertion right step three is the actual inscription right the inscribing part of it now notice that i'm not done yet right uh for starters i know that this is going to give me problems right here this this drawing right so i'm actually going to do a boolean difference Right, and different. But I subtract this guy from this guy, but I'm not going to uh, delete the input, right? I'm actually just gonna leave it uh, like that. All right, so I have that right there. Okay, so it could be argued that I am done drawing the process, right? But there's one more thing that it's not here. Right, which is the little arrow. And uh, we can do draw that on Illustrator. I like to draw it on Rhino, at least to start it on Rhino so that I can actually work the position of it, okay? So notice that I created a, uh, a, uh, a new uh, layer called arrows, right? So I can get into that layer, line. And do a vertical line. I am just going to draw a vertical line for right now. Uh, let's say maybe there. And then I can position it. Maybe that right there in the mid. And then move it a little bit. I'm, I'm just kind of eyeing this. But since I'm working 3D, I'm like, well, I mean, I think it would be better if I actually have two arrows. You know what I think? complemented these drawings because again 
it's not just the copy exercise, right, guys? It's not. It's not just about copying. Um, you know uh, what you see straight from the catalog. There, there, there is some um, some uh, creative input into all of this, and some modifications to be made into this. Okay, so I would recommend that this um, this lines, right? Uh, the the dashes and the arrows. You draw them in uh, in Rhino, um, and you edit them in Illustrator. Right, and it will make more sense as, as we continue. Okay, so I have my base volumes um, right there. Okay, so let's uh, let's set this up just like uh, Samira, uh, right? Because these are now right now it's a it's a Rhino file, right? And these are all uh, images on our screen. But as Samira mentioned, we need to turn this into lines, right? And for that, we can use the make to d command. So that we can edit on Illustrator. So let's go ahead and do that, right? So the first thing that we need to do is set up our view. Okay. So we want to select our objects. We want to go to set view, and we want to set up an isometric view, right? A big, uh, a big component of these drawings being successful is uh, them being in the isometric view, right? So I'm going to set up a south, uh, southeast. Um, view south is isometric notice that it's gonna zoom out all the way but that's why i selected the geometry first and then i go right here and click where it says zoom selected right and i go zoom selected okay so i have my um my 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 components i have um my arrows and I have the right view. The next step would be to do what? Make to D. I make to D and select the um, the the uh, the objects, right? So enter. Uh, in this window right here, um, we want to do the view. We, uh, let's leave the, the properties to input objects and let's tangent, no, hidden, no, silhouette, no, no. So the only thing that we want is to group the output and hit OK. So it's computing, it's processing. It's taking a few seconds, in this case, 1.8 seconds. Now, remember that the next thing that we need to do, guys, is going to your top view. Click again on the zoom selected because right now it should be selected since it was just created. It would bring you right onto this screen right here, and I'm gonna drag it out of there, right? and I'm gonna place it, you know, right next to uh, wherever I'm working, which is over here, right? So, so here it is, right? So we have the uh, the uh, 3D versions of them. And we have the uh, 2D versions of them as well. Okay, so let's maybe start there, right? Um, so that we can actually start using some of these drawings to generate our board. Okay, so the next step would be actually to export. Uh, we're we're exporting our 2D drawing. Okay, the the one that it was the make 2D. All right. So we select it at export, links, location, uh, file name, and file format, which is really important for us, right? So I'm going to select the uh, project folder. Uh, let's make sure that we give. So, so this would be, um, this is uh, inscribe. Make to be. Oh, I don't need to be yelling. Inscribe. Inscribe. Make to be. Um, the format. It's important, guys. Is that AI? It's that. It's that. The important part is that it 
is a, an AI file, an Illustrator file, right? So let me clear my screen right here. Um, so again, location, um, defined, file name, and format being an Adobe Illustrator uh, file. Um, I go ahead and click um, save. Uh, this window, uh, I can just live okay. And that's it, All right? Next, we can come to our Illustrator file, our empty one. And we can go onto the folder. And here is the file that we just created, right? Inscribed make 2D. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, group them before I move them. So select them, control D, select them, control D. Select these and control G. All right. I can then select them, control copy paste over here is them where they go okay i should create a new layer over here um or even better rename this layer as to be so titles is in its own layer to be on its own layer and layer two well i Yes, we don't need it right now. Whoops. Right. So, okay. So we're making progress. So we have, um, you know, some, some lines right here, right? But we want to uh, further um, enhance this drawing, right? So for starters, uh, this line, notice that right now has a uh, gray color. I'm gonna set it to a white, All right? So I'm gonna double click on that. Go to color swatches, white, okay. That way it, uh, it contrasts a little better. Um, I can come onto this next uh, drawing right here. Um, notice that there's a number of things that I like to change, right? So if, again, for example, I want to I want to switch all of these lines right here to be white, but I don't want to select them all individually. Right? It's kind of, a, you know, not as fast. I can just select one. I go to select, same, fill and stroke, and it selects all of those lines that are have the same attributes. I can press I for eyedropper, and I match right there okay uh now next you see that um and again from the example i have gone ahead and uh again uh, clarify a little bit the drawings so we're missing some dash lines over here and the arrows and so arrowheads and dash line all right so arrowheads and Line. Right, so, so let's go ahead and uh, um, edit those. So I can double click on this and give this to guys over here an arrowhead. Uh, my personal favorite one will be the number 10. Notice that I didn't get the orientation correct. I can press right here and swap start and end. And now they're going in the right direction. Notice that um, I'm, I'm missing some dash lines over here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those. Right. So I can double click right here. And I can do that right there. And I can actually even better borrow one of these lines right here. Make it a line right there. This one. And just. adjust it right there now this guy is right here 
are going to match this one over here, except that they're going to be dashed. Right? So I think it was like a three, four, something. So we have that right there. Right? So notice that I went ahead and, and uh, added those. Those are extra, right? Those didn't come from the make to d I am adding those for clarity. Right? Uh, and I have that right there, and I have that, I have that. Right? Next, we have the end result. I'm going to copy this guy over here. Now, for the end result, notice that I, I want you guys to add graphically the outline, right? That actually gives the, the, the volume to it. Notice that that's just around it. I'll show you guys how to do that in a minute. Notice that we have a different line weight on the, on the edges. And notice that we have this also construction lines, with our, which are the dashed lines, which actually come from the, um, the catalog, right? That would be um, this lines right here. Whoops. This one's right there. Notice that my orientation is different. That's okay. All right. So um, so again, we can start off by making this bigger. Because right? this is the final result. Notice that I have gone ahead and make all of the lines white. So I'll go ahead and switch that. I'll go to color swatches, white, okay. I have that right there. Now, the outline, guys, the outline. You don't have to draw it again, right? You can just get it from here. So check this out. I'm going to go around, right, and selecting the outline, right? I'm holding my key, my shift key. And then I press control J. Notice that, that what that does is joins it. Right. You see, I create that outline, and then from there I can bump it up. All right. So that I have that thicker outline. Okay. I can then uh, reduce these other lines in here for something, you know, maybe like a 0.75. Is that what I have right here? The outline, I have it as a two, and the interior lines as a one. Okay, we can do that. Well, actually, I'll leave those as 0.75, like that right there. Notice is that um, according to this drawing right here, I am missing uh, this dashed line right here that is actually showing the traces of the operation. No worries, I can draw a line. There to there. The same thickness, thickness, except that this ones are going to be what? Dashed. Correct. And so we have that right there. Okay. Lastly, we'll see that um, we have some color right at the end of the the uh the diagram right at the end of the diagram so how can we do that well we can go back to our rhino drawing notice that i'm going to get into a rendered view now your guys render view it should be like this right i mean it, by default it has no materials but notice that i have gone ahead and match the the color of the uh, the lines or the uh, or the uh, the layer color, I've gone ahead and matched the the uh, material color, right? So that I can assign it that color uh, on its render view. Um, I set the view again. It's very important that they match. So set view southeast. Zoom selected. Um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm actually going to move it aside from the rest of components. So I'm going to make some room over here, select this and make some room over here, zoom into it again, right? And create this view right here. Now I'm going to show you guys a trick. Some of you guys might know it already. Some of you guys may not. This might come handy at some point, right? So 
we're all familiar with the uh, with the clipping tool. I would say if you want to have a dynamic background that you actually can blur the the background, don't do a clipping clip, right? Don't do a clipping plane. Do a view capture and don't do a clip or either do a file. And within this window right here, you have the, the settings, you know, um, and then choose transparent background. Um, the resolution, we can leave it as is. All right, so I can do okay. Now it's very important guys, if you wanna maintain that transparent background that you actually right here under type, you change that file type into a TIFF. I think PNG might work too, but I know TIFF worked because I was playing with it yesterday. Um, so TIFF, now we can call this um, describe, describe uh, render. come over here and we go edit paste whoops sorry uh, uh, file case I was kind of like what other file place um, and then we go to the folder projects inscribe render we place it and I click notice that, that it's, it's really nice to have the transparent background guys right um because if not you're gonna have the white margin and uh what i mean is that if you just do an edit or if you actually just do a, a clipping from your screen all right a snip as they're called and you do this and you save it and uh you know capture 11 maybe for example you do a file um, place. You have that white background, right? Which there's ways to actually get rid of it, but why bother if we actually have a tool that you know you know can can get rid of it automatically, right? So notice that that render right here. I'm going to create its new lay its own layer. I'm going to call this um, maybe just renders. Renders. Um, I'm going to, well, first, well, first, I am going to get rid of uh, some of the extra kind of uh, space that it has. So I go to crop image. It has a little shadow on the ground that I think it's kind of cool. So I don't want to leave it. Right, and apply. And so I come over here and I place it. Now, remember, we want the lines to be on top of it. I'm actually going to move it, uh, change the order uh, so that the, um, the make to d is above the render. Right, and we changed that layer right there. All right, so I don't know if you, you guys saw that right there. I'm gonna go ahead and play with this positioning. I can scale this up right here. And there's something off. You guys see? Something off, and I could actually kind of see it already with my make to be that my lines are not matching. It's actually good that I'm running into this problem because we don't we don't want that right so everything looks good right here on the front but it's all out of whack out here on the back so most likely what happened is when I was making my make to be I rotated my view and I didn't realize it okay so we got to go back and change that but it's not a big deal right so um, I can um, Make sure that I set my view again. Uh, zoom select. Well, actually, set my view. Isometric southeast. Zoom selected. 
Um, I really don't need all of them. I just need this one. So I'm just gonna make make to deal with this. You shouldn't have to do this again. Um, it was just me that I, for some reason I kind of messed up when I was uh, generating this one right here. I think I am somewhere over here. All right, and you know, actually you can see, oops, or we should be able to see that, how they, they, they're a little bit different, should. All right, let's give this another go. Um, export um, AI. I don't want to override the other one, so inscribe make to D. I'm gonna call this make to D group. Okay. Open it. Copy it. Group group. Smaller. Um, format it, right? So again, real quick, I can go around and select the outline. Press one, control one, control K, join, and I match the outline. Select this lines right here, match this outline right here. And I'm uh, missing my dash lines right here, from there to there, and from there to there. Select them, shift, match. There we go. Get rid of that. Bring this guy in here. And we have that right there. And we have created uh, our first um, component of the board. Okay. Uh, notice as well that um, that the background can can change. Let's say that you know, I mean, I wanna I wanna select something, you know, something uh, different. You know, what I mean, uh, can create something. Well, that's kind of hard to read. Um, you know, from our color theory, I don't know. Right, you can create something, something like that. Uh, it does give you that kind of shadow. Um, that's okay, if you want to keep it or, or not. Um, there's a really easy way to actually get rid of it. Very helpful tool. As well, right? Um, you can um, select this outline. Edit, paste in place, select those, select the image, select the outline, control seven, and you can get rid of that uh, shadow either if you if you want to. And let's just send this send to back. There we go. And that's how you can, you can get rid of that shadow if you don't if you don't want it or if you're you know or you can just um, crop this crop the image more you know just kind of like bring it right there. But I'm gonna go ahead and change back my background. Uh, you know you can do all sorts of uh, different right there. Well, wow, it's really hard to read. Maybe a little bit better. I'm still a fan of the uh, the gray. All right. Oops. And uh, I lock that and um, get rid of this over here. Okay, guys. So let's let's recap, right? 
So I'm gonna have a board with, or three boards with three sections each, right? Operation, operation, and then the combo. We are complementing by showing some of the hidden lines that actually show the uh, the the, uh, the geometry embedded within it. Uh, we have the end result with uh, made to be lines and renders, and we have at the end the combination. Which again, this combination is not part of the reading or the catalog. This section right here, I created that, right? And uh, notice here, even I, um, I think I brought this up on last class, right? I think there's a, there's a um, sort of a process that the catalog, uh, you know, uh, skips. Right? So if you if you look at my screen right here, um, this is the uh, the the method that I was following, you know, to do the. Um, the um, uh, inscription, uh, intersect inscription combo. But I noticed that the book doesn't really talk about this rotation, right? I mean, it does the insertion into the, you know, this base volume, but it doesn't talk about that is rotated, right? So I drew this arc or this circle, semicircle, uh, on, on top of the form, so that I could actually depict right here that the form has been rotated. Okay. How do you guys feel about that? Everyone's still there? I feel like I'm just talking to the air, but you know. Uh, you make it seem so easy. Well, well I mean, I, I, I had to prepare for the class, so I did this already yesterday. So, uh, But don't get me wrong, actually, I spent a lot of time yesterday figuring, you know, how to put it in a concise way to share it with you guys because if you guys see my 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 modeling area right here i tried it multiple ways uh like i know how to do it but i'm trying to show you guys the fastest way of doing it and not not give you guys too much blah 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 um but it's just practice Italy, just like anything you know i mean you, you'll get better at it but that's why we're doing this so that we can practice okay all right uh, let's do this, guys. It should be fun. It should be fun. Um, let's see, guys. Um, let's 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 try it. All right. I mean, um, pick three of your six variations and uh, try it um, yourself. Um, And let's let's have it do before the end of next class to give you guys some time to uh, work on it during next. Well, to give you guys a chance to answer or to allow some time for me to answer questions on the, on Tuesday. Let's get ready on Tuesday uh, to present at least. So for Tuesday before class, guys, I want to see at least one sheet. Just one. There's Tuesday before class. I want to see one sheet. If you have more, better. But I want to see at least one sheet um, of uh, of this kind of uh, um, operation right here. Um, with its three categories or sections. Now, also guys, watch out, right? So one of the criteria is that you may only use one color and red. So notice that I'm using red for the uh, kind of like the actions, like the pull, the rotate, push. Um, and the other color that I'm using strategically is the teal. But the teal matches the, the render color as well. So only one color to pick or to use. And um, notice that I'm following, again, the, uh, the, the process that is right here. And that's how I'm actually, uh, that's how I know what to add color to, right? So that's kind of what I'm using uh, as, a, as a reference, right? Um, so we do that, at least one for next class. And then, you know, we'll talk about 
the rest. But again, we're doing three, okay? Um, questions, guys? Anything that, you know? Um, what is better, Make2D or Export? Uh, for this exercise, um, Idali, Make2D. Make2D is better. Well, it's not that it's better, but it's it's what works best. Um, I guess it is better. Um, make to D first, and then export as an AI file, right? So make to D first, and then export as an AI file. Okay. All right, guys. Well, let's um, let's uh, again. Let's just try at least one. I am gonna create an upload so that you can upload it. All right, before next class, at least one. I just want to see how the the process is looking. Okay. So we'll call this like a little schematic sheet or you know like a progress sheet i just want to see one and i just want to see the graphic methods yes so i'll do that dante i'll, I'll upload a, a copy of this um of this board right here as a reference yes Uh, no problem. You're welcome. Uh, okay. Well, if there is no more questions. Um, I'm, I'm not... Uh, Uh, yes, Karina, so we're going to submit three of them, right? Because this is just the uh, practice uh, for your project, right? Um, so we're just, I was thinking of doing the six, but we can use that time to actually work on your project. So three. So just three. Oh, so just be clear. Okay, so just three, yes. Um, and then Idali, uh, I I will definitely try to upload this on black on YouTube. It just takes a little bit of time to upload each of them, but I will definitely upload it on Blackboard for right now. But feel free to record it if you if you need. But I mean, it'll be on on, on Blackboard. Uh, oh, I guess is that you cannot watch the video from Blackboard on your phone. Is that the problem? Maybe I don't know. Um, I'll let me. Okay, for later on. Yes, I know. So I'll do my best, Didali. I'll do my best for sure to uh, upload this on Black on YouTube as well. Um, yes, I understand when class is over. Because you are going to need this content, uh, you know, not necessarily maybe. Well, I, I can see you guys using this for your current studio project. But, uh, but later on, definitely you're going to need it. So I'll do my best and upload this on the... On the on YouTube as well, okay? Uh, just give me some time. Um, I just need to, because I need to download it, I need to format it, and I need to re-upload it again on YouTube. And it's just, it just takes time. Yes, so tonight we talked about that, right? Um, tonight is the six combinations. Just like this, Pablo. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. So, 
So one more time. The one board is due before next class and the final three, they're due at the end of the day, next class. Does that make sense? So I want to see one board before class begins next class, just to see how things are going and just clarify a few things. But I want to see them before class. So um, probably it'll be the night before that so that I can see them in PDF. Um, and then you have the idea is that you have part of the class next class and part of the and the rest of the day next next class to finish and upload the three on blackboard so one before class two more by the end of uh, or the the final three by the end of uh, of class or the day no problem Reina. you are welcome Okay, give it a shot. Uh, where, where things get a little bit more exciting and more interesting is when you start working actually on the uh, operation of the combination. These four, this were this one's right here. And I noticed that uh, three steps was not enough for me. So I actually had to do four steps. Some of you guys might have to do five steps. I don't know. It just depends on the operations and the sequence that is required in order to achieve the end result. But notice that for that one, you have no, um, there's no outline for that. You, you have to create that outline yourself. Okay. All righty, guys. Well, um, it's been fun. Uh, I really enjoy doing these drawings. Uh, they're just um, really, really cool drawings. Hopefully you enjoy them as well um, and have fun as well. Okay. Stick around if there's any questions. If not, I'll see you guys next class. All right? Good luck with uh, with your other classes. Bye, Karina. Bye, Sabrina. Uh, you're welcome, Pablo. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome, Colin. Thank you. Uh, Bye, Dante. Thanks, Marcus. You too. Uh, thank you, Julia. Great class today. Thank you. Bye. Uh, okay. I'm glad to hear that, Idali. You got it, okay? Just uh, keep practicing. Don't give up. You got this, okay, Idali? And Andrea, you're welcome, Andrea. I'll see you next class. You're welcome, Jose. Enjoy the weekend. I'll see you next class.